Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Sunday message. I am Pastor Rob Goodman, and I am the senior lead pastor here at Zion Freedom Fellowship in beautiful Maryland, the state of Maryland. It has been cold and rainy, and I trust that wherever you are, the sun is shining, especially in your heart. Amen. It's good to be with you all today. Today is Sunday, March the 10th. I am recording this on Saturday, and it is cold and raining outside, but it's really good for the flowers that are soon going to spring up and bloom. Already some of the daffodils are starting to bloom and crocuses and things like that, so it's really nice to see the colors of spring, and it, isn't it? It's really wonderful. I have a wonderful message for you today. But of course, before we start today's message, we're going to pray. Amen. So let's go before the throne of grace together and offer up some praise and thanksgiving to the Lord our God because he has promised to be with us forever and ever and ever and ever. And blessed be the name of the Lord. He is so good. He is so good and he's worthy to be praised. And the scripture says, we shall be saved from our enemies, no matter what comes against us, no matter how big, no matter how high, no matter how wide, no matter how deep it is. God is with you. He is your savior. He is your God. And Jesus has promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. Amen. Isn't that good news? That's why the gospel is means good news it is truly good news and i am so grateful to have you all here with me today and i pray that you would like this message and that you would comment on it as well that god would just cause this ministry to expound throughout the whole earth as it already has done we have visited many nations on the internet here by youtube and we're very, very grateful for what the Lord God is doing. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we are living in the last days. We are living in a time where Bible prophecy is being ful fulfilled. Every turn, every day, God is doing something great and new. And he's got a perfect plan for your life. Do you believe that? I'm sure that you do or you wouldn't be here watching this today. Well, I pray that God would minister to you and that he would touch you in a very special, special way today as we listen, as you listen to today's message. And today's message is called A Better Covenant. Yes, A Better Covenant. And better means better. <laughs> better than the one before. It is an eternal covenant that it was established through the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross. And it is a covenant that will never, ever fail throughout the endless ages of eternity. I love to think about that. That is truly awesome to think about how God's plan will endure forever. You know, we're living in a time of great evil, aren't we? We're living in a time where evil is being exposed. It's running rampant. The spirit of Antichrist. And uh, the Apostle John said in his letters um, that there are many antichrists, plural, already gone out into the world. So we know that the spirit of antichrist is running rampant right now. And we need to learn how to understand that. But we're going to study the better covenant. And, and we're going to go through a lot of scriptures today, old covenant, new covenant. So I, I pray that you bear with me that you will copy down these scriptures and study them. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. You have woken us up on this beautiful day, and it's beautiful even though the sun is not shining where I live right now as I record this message, but the sun is inside of us. Yes, and Lord, I just see you smiling right now. I see a tremendous smile on your face right now in the spirit. I see you smiling because you are pleased with your people. You're pleased. You paid the price so that we could be forgiven and that we would have this everlasting better 
enduring, everlasting covenant that will never, ever fail. And Father, I ask you, Holy Spirit, as we go through these scriptures today, that you would enlighten our hearts. I pray that your anointing would rest upon me for service and that you would give me revelation and understanding as I speak the word of God. May the prophetic anointing rest upon me today, Lord, as I minister to your people. Thank you, Lord, that you are worthy to be praised. You're worthy. So we lift our hands and we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There used to be an old song that we used to sing. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Being here. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us. You will never, ever leave us or forsake us. And Lord, let that word of God go forth right now like a sharp two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, to the joints and the marrow of the body, and let it be a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. I praise you and I thank you, Lord. I praise you and I thank you in the name of of Jesus Christ. Let your name be glorified. We pray these things together and I hear everybody saying amen. I hear you saying it. Amen. Right? Amen. Well, praise be to God. The first scripture that we're going to go to today is Hebrews chapter 6 and we're going to read verses 8. I'm sorry. Hebrew. I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 8 verses 7 Actually, verses 6 through 13. Amen? Let me get a sip of my coffee here, and then we'll get rolling. Can't do without the coffee, right? <laughs> God is so good. Amen? He is so good and so worthy. So worthy. All right, here we go. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, talking about Jesus, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Take those that word better. I believe that word better is listed like eight or nine times in the book of Hebrews. So that means something. The law of repetition is something that we see in scripture. Scripture will confirm scripture. You need to back up scripture with scripture. The word of God is perfect. Amen. If that first covenant had been faultless, then no, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand. You know, Jesus is taking us by the hand. Holy Spirit is leading us and guiding us. We are to be led by the Spirit. No, we're no longer under the law, but we are under grace. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John chapter 1. Because they continued not in my covenant. Wow, that's an important phrase right there. Because they continued not in my covenant. I regarded them not, says the Lord. Well, one thing good about this new covenant. We are called to continue in it. By having fellowship with the Lord. By staying in his word. By studying what he has written to us. You know, the Bible is a love letter to us. It is God's love letter to us. And we know that the Apostle John said that God is love. Amen. 
And we all know about what the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13 about love. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, after the former covenant, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind. Wow. We can be renewed by the word of God. Our minds can be renewed or literally replaced by the word of God. See, our carnal thoughts, emotions, you know, that's where the enemy attacks us. All these flying darts coming at our mind and telling us we're no good. We'll never count. God doesn't hear us. God doesn't love us. They are condemning thoughts, but we know that God has not given us the spirit of condemnation. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and a sound mind, a mind of diligence that stays focused on what God has promised to us. And write them in their hearts. Our hearts become a, a tablet where God writes his word on us. That's why our conscience will not be seared with a hot iron because we've got the word of God written on the fleshly tablets of our heart. And they shall be to me, I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, a body, a church that he loves. And we've been made one with Israel. God, uh, Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 that he has broken down the middle wall or partition that separate us. He broke that wall down and he made us one with him. Gentiles, Jew, Greek, every nation under the sun. He has made us one together in him. I have a lot of uh, pastor friends all over the world. And I'm very grateful for them that God is ministering to them. He is strengthening them. He is giving them grace to endure great trials of affliction and great hardship. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord for all shall know me. Wow, what a covenant. From the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Look, look at what God's saying. The new covenant. He's merciful to our unrighteousness. And he's forgiving and he's kind. He's full of grace and compassion for us. That to me is truly, absolutely amazing. Excuse me. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will remember them no more. Wow. In that he says a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Isn't that amazing? That is the Old Covenant. The Old Testament, that word testament means covenant. And it's great to know that we're in a new covenant established upon better promises. It's an enduring covenant. It will never, ever end. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You're so merciful and kind. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. And we are going to look at verse 22 through 28. Get down there. All right, here we go. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 22 through 28. By so much was Jesus made a surety. A surety. It's a guaranteed covenant. 
Nothing can ever disannul that covenant that God has established through the blood of Jesus. It is an eternal covenant. Jesus made a surety of a better testament or covenant. And, and they were truly many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, Jesus, because he continueth forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the end uttermost wow that's amazing he's able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them for such a high priest became us in other words jesus became flesh and dwelt among us he became us he walked this earth as a man he was perfect. He never committed one sin. No, not ever. Talk about a perfect child. Amen. Jesus never once, from the time he was born to the time he died on that cross, he never once committed any type of sin or transgression. There was no generational curse upon him because he was born of a virgin birth. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. For such a high priest became us who is holy. Wow, he's holy. Be you holy for I am also holy. Harmless. Undefiled. Separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. Who needs not daily as though high as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people for this he did once when he offered up himself for the law makes men high priests which have infirmity or weaknesses or transgressions or sins right but the word of the oath which was since the law makes the son who is consecrated forevermore. Man, those are powerful words. Powerful, powerful words. And the covenant of grace, the eternal covenant of grace, has been established upon the, the word of God. Now, we need to set our minds on these things. And we need to remember exactly what the Lord has spoken to us. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so, so good. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, starting with 18. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start with verse 18. Sorry, guys. Give me a moment. Having a little trouble with my phone here. Oh, come on now. One second, guys. I apologize. I got to go out of this um, again. Give me just a moment, folks. They've done something different with my Bible app when they uh, upload these things. Okay, and I said 
starting Hebrews chapter 12, starting with verse 18. For you are not come unto the mountain that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and the tempest. Remember Mount Sinai. The people could not even come near it. They feared God so much and so holy that people trembled and shook as they saw that mountain burning with fire and the glory of God upon it. So this is what the Apostle Paul is speaking about here. Nor under blackness and darkness and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice that they had heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. Now take that word right there, they could not endure. Now thanks be to God because we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We can come before the presence of his glory without fault, without blame. We are pure and clean and holy in God's eyes, and by the blood of Jesus. You see, the enemy will always speak condemnation to you. If you listen to those words, you will never go before the throne of grace. You will never go into the presence of God because you are literally afraid to do that. Now, we need to have fear and reverence of God. Fear is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs tells us, but not the kind of fear that we're afraid literally afraid to go into God's presence because we've been cleansed and made righteous by the blood of the Lamb. We can go before God's presence and we can endure the word that was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with the dart. And so terrible was that sight, now listen, that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake but you are come, now pay attention to what comes after the word, but, pay attention, but you are come unto Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, angels and to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, that's you and me, hallelujah. That's us. Jesus was the firstborn. Amen? Now we are the second, the third, the fourth, and so on, and so on, and so on. Oh man, this went all the way back up to the top again. Ay, ay, ay. They have really changed my Bible app. I'm sorry about this, folks. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How did I get to 13? Ay, 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 ay. Oh my, sorry folks. I might have to get a different Bible app. Oh, come on. I'm sorry guys. I'm having some serious issues with this here. Let me pause this for just a moment, and I'll be right back with you. Actually, I don't think I can do that. Sorry to take up your time, folks. I really am. Let me go back to this again one more time.
Actually, I'm going to start reading from verse 12 here. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For, we, for you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For you are not come unto the mountain that might be touched, and that burned with fire. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they then heard entreated that the word could not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded. If so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and I quake. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God and the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, and to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse him not that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused that spoke on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn, if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised. This, I don't understand what's going on with this Bible app. It keeps moving on me, and it's never done this to me before, so I apologize. All right, let, let's go to another scripture. I'm sorry, folks. I really am. I apologize greatly. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand. There's that word again. I took them by the hand. Amen. To bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke. Although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with them, with the house of Israel, after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Wow. Praise be to God. And will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, God has written his words in our heart. In the new covenant, he's written his words literally in our heart. And you and I have been called unto a life of righteousness and to a life of godness. God has called you, brothers and sisters. He has called you and he has anointed you so that you can be a partaker of these better and enduring promises that are in the new covenant of grace. Let the Lord minister to you right now. Let him minister to you. Let him strengthen you. Let him give you a spirit of endurance. Jesus said, those that endure to the end shall be saved. They literally shall 
be saved. Amen? So you and I are living in a day of great darkness. Temptations are coming your way. Hardships are coming in your way. The enemy is really trying to ra uh, razzle you and spook you and make you afraid to serve God. He is a liar. I want to minister to you right now. Listen to me. Satan is a liar. And Jesus Christ defeated him. He nailed those laws and ordinances to the cross. Those traditions of men that made the word of God of none effect. He literally nailed them to the cross. He fulfilled the law so that you and I can walk in the covenant of grace and be accepted fully by God. Now, we've got to strive unto holiness. We need to allow the Spirit of God to perfect us. That word perfect in the Greek means to become com mature and complete. We think of the word perfect as there's no blemish, nothing. No, we've got blemishes. We all have issues in us that God is still working on. If you're still living right now, I don't care how many years you've been serving the Lord. I've been serving the Lord now for like 44 years. And I started as soon as I got born again. Two months later, I became a youth pastor because there was nobody else in the church to do it. And I got chosen for that job. So God has been with me. He's been with me through hardship. He's been with me through darkness. He's been with me through temptation and trial. He's been with me through every terrible ordeal that I've had to walk through. And I want to read some words to you that came from Rabbi Schneider, who is a Jewish rabbi who's been born again by the Spirit of God. You can watch him on TV, the Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I got a text message from him today, and I want to share with you exactly what that text message says. Let the Lord minister to you. Amen? Let the Lord minister to you. You know, with this Bible app messing up today, I didn't even get to all the scriptures. I apologize for that. I really do. But let me give you these verses so that you know what they are. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6 through 11. Jeremiah 11, verses 1 through 5. Jeremiah 11, verses 1 through 5. First Chronicles 16, 13 to 17. Mark chapter 14, verses 23 through 25. Mark 14, 22 through 25. Ephesians 2, verses 12 through 16. Now this is the message that came from Rabbi Schneider. He says, Shalom, my friends. My daughter sent this to me today. Now I want you to pay close attention to these words. These words are powerful. They are extremely, very, very powerful. Shalom, my friends. My daughter sent this to me today. Now listen. Listen very carefully. Your calling is going to crush you. Listen. Your calling is going to crush you. If you are called to mend the brokenhearted, you're going to wrestle with a broken heart yourself. Listen, if you're called to heal God's little ones, you're going to experience your own share of trauma. Wow. If you're called to preach and teach the gospel, you will be sifted for the wisdom that anoints your message. Like Jesus said to Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Mm, praise you, Jesus. If you are called to empower, your self-esteem will be attacked. Your successes will be hard fought for. Your calling will come with spiritual warfare and sifting. 
Both are necessary for your mantle to be authentic, humble, and powerful. Are you hearing me? This message made me tear up when I received this this morning. It really caused me to weep before the Lord. Your crushing won't be easy because your assignment is not easy and you cannot minister powerfully what you haven't walked out. And he says, read that sentence again, so I'm going to. Your crushing won't be easy because your assignment is not easy and you can't minister powerfully what you haven't yet walked out. Wow. When you're feeling the weight of of it coming down on you run to the father who longs to be your comfort oh thank you lord let him whisper your true identity over you while resting under the shadow of his wings position yourself against his heartbeat let him renew your strength and set your eyes forward remember what paul said i forget those things which are behind i press forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling of god that is in christ jesus my lord amen we must forget the things that are in the path satan will always remind you of your past i remember this from years ago satan reminds you of your past but all you need to do is remind him of his future amen the devil knows satan knows that his time is short and he wants to stop this revival he wants to stop you from becoming the king that god has called you to become he wants to stop your calling from coming to pass he wants to try to kill your body he wants to crush to try to steal and to try to destroy you but Jesus said, he's praying that our faith will not fail. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now to comfort your people. Lord, comfort them for all the hardship that they have been through. Comfort them, Father, for what has gone through their lives, Lord. Comfort them and draw them your arm around them and pull them tightly to your chest lord bless your people i pray bless your people i pray and then he writes finally no olives no oil and what do olives happen what happens to them they get crushed in a press to produce oil you know the garden of gethsemane was the place of pressing and Jesus was pressed sore there he was pressed his disciples fell asleep when he was suffering in prayer wow I can't imagine what he went through can you I just can't imagine it but he went through serious hardship but yet God gave his son the grace to endure that hardship. And he prayed, Father, if it were possible, take this cup away from me. But not my will, Lord, but yours, Father, be done. Amen. No grapes, no wine. Your oil is not cheap, my friend. No. The oil of anointing is not cheap. There is a price to be paid. There is a price. And I pray right now. I pray right now for you. Father, strengthen your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, strengthen your people. Strengthen your people by the spirit of might, the spirit of encouragement, let every weight that is on their shoulders right now be lifted off in the name of Jesus. I command every weight to be lifted off as they come into your presence, Father. Let your name be glorified in their lives. 
Lord, I ask that you would minister strength to your people right now. All over the world, who's ever watching this, the Lord knows what you have walked through. He knows the hardship that you have faced. You know, I'm amazed at my brothers and sisters in India and in Pakistan and all the different nations that I talk to pastors it's amazing the weight and the burden of ministry that is upon them. My Pakistani brothers and sisters are threatened to be annihilated and killed. So we pr trust God and pray for them. We are called to a life of prayer. We're called to be sober-minded. We're called to live a life of of faith and righteousness before our Father. Like the Apostle Paul said, and the Father said, Be you holy, for I am holy. Yes, be holy, for He is the Holy One of Israel, and He will never change. I am the Lord God, and I will not change. I will not change. Amen. I will not change. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, I want to apologize for what was happening with my Bible app. I have no idea what was going on. But the Lord is the answer. He still ministers despite our own weakness and our own failings he still reigns and i pray that if you don't know jesus christ as your lord and your savior i pray that you will minister to him in the name of jesus and allow him to lift every weight away from you that you will allow him to enter into your heart behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hears my voice and opens up the door i will come my father and i will come in and sup with him and have fellowship with him let jesus in he's knocking at the door of your heart right now answer his call some of you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit right now. What I mean by that is that God himself, the Holy Spirit, is drawing you unto him. Don't resist it. None of us know how much life we have left on this earth. None of us know the time of our departure, when our last breath will be. We don't know, do we? Let's make sure that we're prepared to enter into the gates of heaven. And again, you're not going to get in because you've been a good person. You're not going to appear before God just because you gave money or you did this for the poor. No. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us. By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. That is how we get saved. And the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And he has given to us the same ministry of reconciliation that he once had. Be reconciled unto God. Be reconciled unto God and be justified by your faith in Christ. Just allow him to justify you. Pray this prayer with me. Lord God in heaven, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. He was born as a little baby in that manger he was laid. He came as flesh and blood. You devised a wonderful plan that outsmarted Satan. 
and you caused your son to live and have a ministry on this earth and you allowed him to go to the cross for us and all of the sins of the entire world every sin that was ever committed was laid upon him to the point that you could not look at him jesus I'm father you could not look at your son on that cross so father i ask you right now to minister and receive this person that's praying this prayer man or woman little boy or girl teenager someone that's elderly and very sick right now i ask you to minister to them and bring them into the kingdom of god if you just prayed that prayer with me i want you to let me know you can email me at this address zion freedom fellowship that's all one word zion z-i-o-n freedom f-r-e-e-d-o-m fellowship f-e-l-l-o-w-s-h-i-p dot com zion freedom fellowship at gmail.com i will respond to that email and i will get back with you welcome into god's kingdom the angels in heaven are shouting your name throughout heaven the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now over one sinner that repents welcome to the kingdom of god i want to be the first to welcome you into god's kingdom thank you for being here with us today and for all the other believers i encourage you no matter how long you've served the lord whether you're new christian you've been serving the lord for 40 50 years i pray that god will renew your strength and your confidence that he would strengthen you to continue on the path to the very end no matter what comes your way remember that you have eternal life right now you're not going to get it you have it right now and i want to say to you may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his great peace his great shalom and as i always say shalom alaikum may the peace of the lord rest upon you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you for being with us once again i apologize for the trouble i was having with my bible app on my phone i will see how i can get that fixed all right guys i love you all very much and i'll see you again here next week god bless you all mm. bye for now god bless you we love you and we are very very grateful to have you with us amen <laughs>